Hello students, today let me tell you what a social group is and the different types of groups which are found among human beings. The word group literally means persons or things belonging or classed together or forming a whole. In social science, it is used to denote human beings who are always involved in several forms of interaction. Man is a social animal who never lives in isolation. Hence, the group found in a human society is called social group as distinct from groups found among other animals. A social group is not merely a simple collection or aggregate of individuals, but one which exhibits some degree of social cohesion. It, therefore, is any collection of human beings who are brought into social relationships having some degree of reciprocity and some measure of mutual awareness between those related. It is a plurality of persons who have a common identity, some feeling of unity, certain common goals and shared norms and who recognize themselves as a distinct social unit. The essence of the social group is not physical closeness but a consciousness of interaction. Groups are among the most stable and enduring of social units, which are important both to their members and to the society at large. Regular and predictable behavior of the group form the foundation upon which society rests. The distribution of the population in social groups and the size, number and characteristics of such groups are important features of the structure of society. To define social group is not an easy task. Different definitions have been given by different scholars. But for your benefit, I take up only two definitions. One given by McIver and the other by Baltimore. First, let me quote McIver. Quote, by group, we mean any collection of human beings who are brought into social relationships with one another, unquote. According to Baltimore, quote, a social group is an aggregate of individuals in which definite relations exist between the individuals comprising it. And each individual is conscious of the group itself and its symbols, unquote. Social groups are different from social classes, but similar to social categories as members are aware that they share something in common and are in interaction with one another. There is a we feeling among the members which help them to develop a sense of collectivism. A feeling of unity brings the members close to one another. With common needs and ends, their behavior becomes common. Certain norms and rules of behavior help the group to remain organized and the members are expected to respect these norms. Specific styles of interaction and language and symbols help members to communicate. Discipline within the group is strictly maintained and those who neglect discipline are punished. The members of a group are reciprocally related to each other. Every human being is a member of one or more than one group like family, peer group, a club and neighborhood, etc. where interaction takes place. Sometimes they have common objects and sometimes they participate in similar activities. Group activities always follow some rules and norms shared by every member. Members of a group are aware of their activities and they share a common consciousness of their joint interaction. Sometimes the purpose for which a group was formed also gets changed and new changes are brought into the group to allow flexibility. The size of a group also changes due to circumstances. A society is made up of various types of groups which are similar 
or different from each other. Classification of these groups can be done on the basis of social interaction, degree of quality of interaction, degree of intimacy of contact, range of group interests, duration of interest, degree of organization and lastly size. Groups range from highly developed organizations as the modern factory to a largely unorganized temporary crowd and permanent class. In the classification of human groups, one of the broadest and most fundamental distinctions is that between small and intimate groups on the one hand and large and impersonal groups on the other. In this module, I shall discuss Cooley's classification as his classification of groups into primary, secondary and tertiary on the basis of the degree of intimacy of contact is one of the most widely utilized concepts of sociological groups. Let us first look at the primary group. The primary group is the nucleus of all social organizations. It is a small group in which a small number of persons come into direct contact with one another. They meet face to face for mutual help, companionship and discussion of common questions. In the words of C.H. Cooley, quote, by primary I mean those characterized by intimate face-to-face -face association and cooperation. These are primary in several senses but chiefly in that they are fundamental in framing the social nature and ideals of the individual." Unquote. He goes on to say that the development of this common group identity lead the members of the primary group to naturally identify themselves as we or us. The essential characteristics of a primary group are intimate feelings and close identification. Intimacy of relationship depends upon certain factors such as physical proximity, small size, stability, similarity of background, limited self-interest and intensity of shared interests. So looking at these factors we need to elaborate each factor so that you all have a very good understanding of the characteristics of a primary group so as to distinguish it from other groups such as secondary group and tertiary group. So let us talk about physical proximity. In order to maintain close relations among the people, it is necessary to maintain close contact among them. Close physical proximity makes exchange of ideas and opinions easy. Coming to the second point that is small size, relationship can become intimate only in a small size. In small groups, members can know one another personally and develop a group character and intimacy more quickly. To promote intimacy of relationships, the primary group should be stable to some extent. Each member in a primary group should have something to give and take. Though members join the group with the motive of satisfying their own interest, yet they should subordinate their interests to the central interests of the group. In a primary group, the common interest is shared by every member and by being shared by all, the interest acquires a new significance and a new valuation. I shall now discuss what the secondary group is. A secondary group is one which is large in size where human contacts become superficial and undefined. The relations of the members are limited in scope and arrived at by 
trial and error and in terms of self-interest calculations of the members. A member exerts only indirect influence over the other. He knows personally only a very few of the other members and functions as one among almost countless members. His cooperation with his fellow workers is indirect and very seldom comes face to face with them. He communicates with them by such indirect means as the written word. According to Ogburn, quote, the groups which provide experience lacking in intimacy are called secondary groups, unquote. According to Davis, quote, secondary groups can be roughly defined as the opposite of everything already said about primary group, unquote. The main characteristics of secondary groups are formal and impersonal relations, large in size, option of membership, active and inactive members, indirect relations, formal rules, status of individuals and goal oriented. The relations of members do not exercise influence over others. There is no face-to-face -face interaction and the relations are casual. The relations of members do not exercise influence over others. There is no face-to-face -face interaction and the relations are casual. Secondary groups may be spread all over the world. The membership of secondary groups is not compulsory. Due to absence of intimate relations, some members become inactive while others are active. The members are scattered throughout the length and breadth of the country or the world and therefore communicate with each other by indirect means. A secondary group is regulated by formal rules set by a formal authority where a clear-cut division of labor is made. In a secondary group, the status of the members depends upon their roles. The main purpose of a secondary group is to fulfill a specific function. Now, let me tell you about the third group that is the tertiary group. Any group accepted as model or guide for shaping one's attitude, behavior, and evaluations is called a tertiary group or reference group. These groups comprise many groups having similar characteristics and the contact or interaction is only notional in character. For members of a particular group, another group is a tertiary group if any of the following circumstances prevail. First, when members of the first group aspire membership in a second group, the second group becomes the tertiary group. Second, when members of the first group strive to be like members of the second group. Third, when the members of the first group derive some satisfaction from being unlike the members of the second group in some respect and even strive to maintain the difference between themselves and the members of the second group. Fourth, when without necessarily striving to be like or unlike or to belong to the second group, the members of the first group appraise their own group or themselves by using the second group or its members as a standard for comparison. Of the three groups discussed just now, Primary group and secondary group very often come into association with one another. So it is essential to differentiate between them so that one can easily distinguish when we see a group, either it is primary or secondary. The 
Dear students, having discussed what a social group is and the different types of groups found among human beings, we can conclude that groups are units of society and every human being is a member of one or more than one group. In order to understand a particular society, it is therefore necessary to study the behavior of the groups present in it. Their behavior is a reflection of the structure of the society they live in. The degree of closeness and the frequency with which they interact among themselves will determine the type of group they belong to.